خلیفہ کے ہم ہیں خلیفہ ہمارا وہ دل ہے ہمارا آقا ہمارا 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 خلیفہ ہمارا وہ دل ہے ہمارا آقا ہمارا وہ دل ہے ہمارا آقا ہمارا السلام علیکم and welcome back to this week with حضور We are honored to present highlights of the National Peace Symposium 2024 where Hadrat Khalif al-Masi Ayyad al Ta'ala bin Nasr al-Aziz delivered the keynote address. In addition, on the following day, beloved Hazur held meetings with several international delegations who had traveled to attend the peace symposium. Here are our highlights from last weekend. On Saturday, Hazrat Khalif al-Masi V, may Allah be his helper, delivered a historic keynote address during the annual National Peace Symposium of the Ahmadiyya Muslim Community. The event in Bethel Fatul was attended by hundreds of guests from 30 countries. Following tilawat and speeches by dignitaries, Hazur presented the Ahmadiyya Muslim Peace Prize for the advancement of peace for the years 2020 and 2023. The 2020 prize was awarded to Adi Patricia Roche, founder of the charity Chernobyl Children International, recognized for her long-lasting post-Chernobyl disaster efforts. Hazul presented David Spurdor, founder of charity Stand By Me, with the 2023 prize for his support of orphans and underprivileged children across the world. During the keynote address, Hazul spoke about the raging conflicts in Gaza and Ukraine and outlined the urgent solutions needed for establishing peace based on Islam's teachings. The stark reality is that even those institutions founded with the primary objective of maintaining the peace and security of the world are becoming increasingly irrelevant. For example, the United Nations has become a weak and almost powerless body where a few dominant nations wield all the power and easily override the views of the majority. Instead of deciding each issue based on its facts and merits, nations have formed alliances and vote according to their self-interests. Ultimately, critical decisions are made by a few privileged nations in whose hands rest the veto power. Instead of faithfully serving the cause of peace and justice, they wield their veto like a trump card wherever their narrow interests are threatened, irrespective of whether their decision shatters the peace and prosperity of other nations and leads to the death and destruction of scores of innocent people. Let it be clear, therefore, that where a veto power exists, the scales of justice can never be balanced. Regrettably, due to its uh, inherent lack of justice, the fate of the United Nations seems set to mirror that of its failed predecessor, the League of Nations. And if the system of international law, weak as it may be, completely collapses, the resulting anarchy and destruction is beyond our comprehension. Whilst there are myriad of conflicts taking place in the world, the most pressing and dangerous are those taking place between Israel and Hamas, and the ongoing war between Russia and Ukraine. Some people may believe or may have been conditioned to think that the conflict between Israel and Palestine is a religious war. However, in reality, it is a 
geopolitical and territorial conflict. As for the war in Ukraine, it is very evidently a geopolitical war being fought for territorial reasons. I firmly believe there is only one way to end these wars, by ensuring that justice prevails and that whatever settlements are made are based on equity, as opposed to what better serves interests of external powers. Otherwise, there is no benefit to the United Nations or international laws, and the only rule that shall hold weight will be the one that declares might is right. In terms of the Ukraine war, Russia has a veto power at the UN Security Council, whilst in effect Ukraine also has won by virtue of its alliance with those Western nations who have permanent membership of the Security Council. How can a settlement be agreed if both sides can effectively wield a veto? Why would either party be motivated to move even an inch if they know they can veto any deal not weighted entirely in their favor? As for what is happening in Gaza, though both the Israelis and the Palestinians have their supporters. The veto power has only been used in Israel's favor since the current war ignited several months ago. For example, in February, 13 out of 15 members of the UN Security Council voted in favor of an immediate ceasefire in Gaza, but the United States utilized its veto power and the resolution was defeated. How can peace be established where the majority view is so easily discarded? That is not justice. Instead, it is a rejection of democracy and principle of equality. Contrary to these man-made laws, Islam's teachings emphasize justice to such a degree that Chapter 5 Verse 9 of the Holy Quran states that the enmity of any nation or people must never incite one to deviate from the path of justice and fairness. Manifesting such integrity is nearer to righteousness. Even non-religious people will surely recognize the wisdom and benefit of adopting this preeminent standard of justice. With all my heart, I hope and pray that before it is too late, the world comes to its senses and brings an end to the brutalities and wars taking place in the world. Certainly, it is my opinion that there should be a full ceasefire between Israel and Hamas or Palestine and also in the war between Russia and Ukraine. Thereafter, instead of inciting their respective allies towards further warfare, all members of the international community should prioritize ensuring relief effort or stepped up to help those in desperate need and focus on bringing about a lasting and peaceful settlement. If instead we stand by and let these wars escalate further, countless more innocent lives will be lost. And surely history will judge us with contempt as the author of our own destruction and misery. And so in conclusion, if we wish to save our future generation from being born with the ill effects of radiation caused by nuclear warfare, and desire to save them from deprivation and desperation. And if we wish to save ourselves from their curses and laments, we must act with urgency and wisdom. When you think of modern day warfare and its lethal potential, as His Holiness referred to, 
and it was music to my ears to hear it as a leader because no other leaders are talking about nuclear pr proliferation no leaders of any country that I know of are actually speaking about um, you know the nuclear arms race how it's now back in the fray and all of the achievements of the past are being undone and it takes a lot of vision and a lot of courage which came from His Holiness tonight. I really thought his speech was thought-provoking. I think he's courageous to criticise uh, Israel and to criticise America. Um, these people are ruining the lives of thousands of children and I really think His Holiness was brave in, in, in saying what he said in the way that he said it. And what he said is true. Because what he said about um, the uh, democracy not existing is true. How many people say that? But he had the courage to say that tonight. And I admire him for that. I think for me the reflection on the Security Council and the ability to veto is really pertinent. I actually haven't heard anyone else speak about, about that um, recent and how can we develop the UN to be more instrumental for peace. I was particularly impressed and I learnt a lot um, from the, the references to the Holy Quran in relation to, to peace building. And those are messages which people of all faiths and none can well, should follow, certainly can follow and, and should follow. His Holiness is a very, very intellectual, intelligent person who has analyzed the world situation very carefully. And his analysis and his conclusions are absolutely right. The only way to peace. And I think he reflected that very well about how the United Nations is structured about how America can effectively veto so much. And if we're going to get to peace, it needs to be a fair and just settlement on both sides. It can't just be fair and just for one side. So I think what he said was absolutely you know, perfect. And it would be something which I think Western countries find difficult to actually enact. But I think many in their hearts would absolutely agree with it. I think what I liked about the speech was that uh, I think he faced the issues uh, head on and I thought that uh, it was insightful and I thought that uh, part of it that I like well, is that he was also talking about how wars should be conducted in an ethical way and I thought for me that that was a realistic approach meaning that he acknowledged that there will be conflict sometimes but that there is a way to try to manage it, to make it better and to last less. I thought that His Holiness's address was extremely powerful. It was really a tour de force of all the challenges that we're facing across the world in areas of conflict and the severe humanitarian impact that that's having, the lives being lost, the, the areas that are being devastated, and the choices that we could try and make differently and how that is all connected to a wider view and more strategic view we should have of geopolitics. Earlier in the day, some guests from Austria who had travelled to attend the peace symposium were honoured to meet Hazar Khalif al Masih V, may Allah be his helper, in Islamabad. After the Mullagat, they expressed their sentiments. What I found is that his, his concern for his community and the, the persecuted in his community is is very uh, very very big uh, big concern he is a very gentle religious leader uh, which is not always the case uh, a real gentleman uh, and uh, he f he he somehow expresses empathy uh, that's uh, that's what i understand a religious leader should be like uh, very impressive and I was very excited, but he's such a nice person and so, yeah, such a warm person and he welcomed us so friendly and, yeah, it was really nice. The following day, on Sunday 10th March, as Akhlif al the V, may Allah be his helper, granted an audience to more than a dozen foreign delegation of guests who had travelled from abroad to attend the peace symposium. 
One of those fortunate to have the chance to have a meeting with Azul was Robert Rihak, ambassador at large and special envoy and chair of the International Religious Freedom or Belief Alliance. I was surprised that His Holiness is really a nice person with sense of humor. Uh, when he asked uh, how we feel about the whole uh, event, I said that I have just one complaint, that we were spoiled by, uh, by your hospitality. And uh, he was laughing and then we changed also some, some another jokes. And I think this is the best way because uh, the Ahmadi community is persecuted in the world, but the approach of your community and His Holiness is to turn to the others and to try to help them and to uh, restore peace, which is the best way. For me, Ahmadiyya community is an excellent example. If all the religious community would follow the path, we have paradise here uh, on earth. It's a beautiful feeling, a feeling of, of peace that somebody is here looking after us and somebody up there is looking after us. Um, it's, it's an extremely wonderful feeling and I'm very honored. We are coming with a message of peace from Switzerland, which is again met by a message of peace by His Holiness. And I think that was um, beautiful expressed yesterday by His Holiness speech about uniting the world in peace and a very clear message to the politicians to uh, see about their own interest, but of the of the interest of the whole world. His smile uh, is so uh, comfortable. Uh, Make you uh, not uh, uh, unknown. You know, you feel like in your home, like with your friends. It's been a very warm meeting. Uh, His Holiness is a person that uh, transmits a sense of peace. And um, I am very pleased to, to have been here and uh, meeting so, um, so clever, so uh, peaceful person. The speech of His Holiness uh, is a very inspiring speech and um, he's, um, he's a very strong person because he has denounced uh, the paper of the uh, United Nations. And uh, I, I am thinking uh, deeply about what he said yesterday. It was really an enriching meeting because we could talk about the United Nations Security Council and about the problems that we are facing as a global nation. We should come all together and I'm also convinced, just like the Caliph, uh, that we should change the world system. And it was also beautiful to see that he also mentioned also not only Palestine, but also uh, the problems in Sudan, the problems in Ethiopia, the problems that the world is facing. So we need a sort of world authority. And as the Caliph is saying this to the people and to the world, that we need to change the system to make a better world for everyone. A world with no hate and more love. The principles of the Ahmadiyya. So it's really nice to see that the Caliph is bringing this message around the world, that the people can hear this message. You have to be very courageous to do it. Not a lot of political leaders dare to do it. He, as a religious leader, is a real leader. Because I think if you are really spiritual, if you are really religious, you also want to change the world, you want to make it a better place for everyone to live. So I'm happy that he is bringing this fantastic political and religious message to the world. So having this conversation with the Caliph makes me really happy. With the grace of Allah, once again, Hazrat Khalif al Masih V, may Allah be his helper, presented the message of true Islam to a worldwide audience at the Peace Symposium and urged each member of nation and each person to play their role in the cause of peace. May Allah the Almighty enable people all around the world to pay heed. Those were highlights from just some of Beloved Hazul's activities last weekend. We now end with our final segment, the Friday Sermon Summary. In today's Friday Sermon, Hazur, may Allah be his helper, spoke regarding the abundant blessings of the month of Ramadan. Towards the end of his sermon, Hazur, may Allah be his helper, prayed for a successful Ramadan, 
the general state of the world, and mentioned a new law in the UK which commentators say targets Muslims.